Georgie, you've got a couple of properties in Cheltenham, which has intrigued me how the name The Lucky Onion came around. It sounds like it might be a racehorse to me. But, um, <laughs> where did the name come from? We, uh, we couldn't think of a name for the company and we had a head chef who had an onion sitting on the side in the kitchen and he Sam, my husband, came in and said, what's that mouldy onion doing hanging around? Get rid of it, threw it in the bin. And then we had a terrible, terrible service where people were complaining left, right and centre and things like that, which we don't often have, touch wood. Um, and so they fished it out and he, the chef was like, this is my lucky onion. And we were like, that's perfect. That can be the name of, of the company. So. <laughs> um, one area where boutique hotels can be seen as a disadvantage is when it comes to loyalty programs and things like this. Yeah. I understand you're launching the Lucky Onion Club next year. Do you want to tell us a bit about what that involves and, and uh, how you see it working? Well, it's sort of evolving organically. It, it wasn't really a sort of plan to be any kind of loyalty scheme or anything like that. It was really to sort of be engaging with people who like what we do and for us to showcase people that we really admire and think are amazing in, in our industry and whether and I guess because in hotels you're dealing with all sorts of things from food drink so chefs and uh, cocktail makers to music to art or whatever it is there's designers then what we thought is we could sort of showcase the things that we love so you get visiting artists or chefs or people that we really admire to come and do a talk or cook for for people who like us. So we're based around so. events at your properties for, for your guests to come in and, and, and take part? Yeah, and not just guests. It can be anyone who lives locally or lives in London, whoever it is really. Yeah. Have you got any more properties in the pipeline? And if so, will they still be in your... Cotswolds heartland, which seems to be the, you know, yeah. the, the heart of the meeting hotel centre. Well, I, I know. We're, we're going to be sticking in the Cotswolds now. We'd love to do something outside the Cotswolds. We've got two coming on th th that we're working on at the moment. So one is a country inn, a bit like the, the Wheat Chief. And then the other one is next door to our existing property. We've bought the building next door and we're sort of knocking through to create more restaurant space um, and, and 11 more bedrooms. So those two projects at the moment. And then we're always looking. So, you know, so whatever which turns up. would be the most attractive to you? If I gave you five million quid and said go and buy a couple of hotels, where would they be? <clears throat> I think I'd need a lot more than five million pounds. But, um, yeah, so probably, I mean, I'd, we'd love to do London one day. Yeah, yeah. But you need a, you know, the budget is huge for, for London properties. Just to one by the freehold, or even if you're an operator, to to sort of function there. So we don't know is the answer. We we'd look at places on the beach. We'd look at places abroad. We'd do anything really. We're sort of very open. There's no grand strategic plan. Yeah, <laughs> there probably should be a grand strategic plan, but yeah, there's not.